What is up guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Today I would like to share with you guys a deck that I've been using at the moment, attempting to climb back through the ranks of a diamond. That's going to be none other than Endure Spiders, but this list in particular is a little bit different. It kind of features some of the great cards of like the champion list, Undying list, as well as obviously Endure itself. It is a deck that features no champions I like to add, so if you're interested in trying out Endure with a slight budgeted version, I could definitely consider this. I didn't do it on purpose, not running champions, but this this is the list I thought could be kind of strong in certain areas. The way I built it was basically I was trying to like kind of target uh, Ionia a little bit by kind of featuring the Undying package because you know they're clearing your minions and so if you want to have stuff stick cards like uh, Curse Keeper and Undying can be quite annoying for them to deal with. But anyway let's go through the list here because I think it's I think it's pretty cool. So basically we have Endure, three copies of pretty standard Endure. So for you guys that do not know, when I'm summoned, grant me plus one plus one. So you basically buff this throughout the game with a bunch of token cards and having your units die and then just inevitably hitting them in the face. Now there's another list that does feature like, you know, Thresh, the spider package as well as some with Trinity or some without. So, you know, you've got different options here, but as I said, I'm kind of semi testing out this one to see how it performs. It's been going pretty well so far. I am six and three with this current list I have tweaked a few cards here and there and uh, as we continue through the list I'll explain you know roughly why these cards are here and why I went for this line so buffing up and do it cap it happens pretty naturally it doesn't need necessarily become a 2020 to win the game you can kind of chip them down uh, hit damage to the face here and there and then uh, never really win one of the interesting cards I'm testing out is double ruination because we are sitting into the undying kind of cards here and stuff I'm yet to see this card find its full potential I did actually have three copies of it but I've toned it down to two because I would like to draw into it, especially against a popular deck at the moment, which is Tempo Sejuani. And against um, against uh, Deep, it can actually be kind of a backbreaker here and there. Haven't had a chance to try a match out yet, though. Two atrocities in this list because, you know, we can be a bit more greedy now with Burn being a bit slower. And this list was generally pretty well catered towards it. And we're still pretty toned heavily for that kind of matchup, but not specifically because of that matchup, because some of the tools like Rasp of Undying are finding a bit of value against some mid-range decks, especially Tempo Sejuani, for clearing stuff like Misfortune. So I have do I have three copies of Withering Way at the moment and three co uh, two, three sorry copies of Grasp of the Undying. They're just to kind of help stall out the game and inevitably get there as we proceed. We just hug Wraith Call back in there. So I am trying out two copies of Neverglade Collector. I'm yet to see this really shine. So we might consider switching this out for some, for maybe the Remeter, uh, Rem Ethereal Remeter, the five, the five mana card that uh, kills a unit and then summons one that costs two more. But Netherglade kind of does find value here and there. It does give us a bit of healing and damage dealing. So it's definitely a suitable card for this list, but it might not shine as much specifically with the, uh, like the Undying package and less tokens. But nevertheless, Neverglade Collector is quite an interesting card and very powerful as cut for this kind of a list. So I was mucking around with, uh, here we go, uh, Chronicle of Ruin and Wraith Caller. I was mucking around with these. I've decided just to run actually one copy of Chronicle of Ruin because it ideally finds the most value when you hit it on turn four on top of like a Curse Keeper or on Dying. And sometimes if you draw into multiple copies of them, they kind of, I know they can, they can, they can every now and then brick your hand, but regardless, it's still a very powerful card. This could most definitely be a two of, but at the moment I'm trying out three Wraith Callers to get, get the separate bodies and have more blockers and provide a bit more uh, pressure. Since we are super heavy into uh, uh, Shadow Isles, I'm not running like the Hawk or Averrosian Sentry, so card draw is a bit more minimum, but we do have three copies of Glimpse Beyond to make up for it. But since we're that heavy into it, I feel like I just kind of have to be running Wraith Caller. At first I was trying it with like triple Chronicle of Ruin and stuff, but I decided inevitably like, I'm gonna try out three Wraith Callers. It seems to be working out so far, so there's no problem at all. And one Chronicle of Ruin. This could maybe be a two of. Uh, so I'm only gonna use two copies of the Undying and that is because I don't really wanna draw three copies of it ever. I kind of wanna guarantee I usually draw into one of it. One, one Undying usually gets the job done in terms of the value that you can spit out of it. Uh, getting two is not too bad either, but I think if you're drawing three, you might oftentimes find yourself just kind of dying and bending over to some lists that aren't even really trying to press you inevitably, they're just playing their dudes. Uh, but without a doubt, I think two Undyings is good here, and I will talk about the next card up here and why I'm featuring it. So I cut one Undying to specifically put a Splinter Soul in. Now, funnily enough, if you play this on top of on an Endure, when you summon it, it's actually still going to get like the summoning effect, so it's actually going to buff up to a massive unit. So it's like... 
It's, it's weird. It's like I've cut the Undying to specifically run Splinter Soul because this can inevitably sometimes become another uh, Undying if I need to. But in the end, I can use it on a bunch of different cards. And I really like that. I really like, you know, having an option like that that kind of like can still provide me with Undying if I needed to, but I can do so much more with it. And I've had a couple of games here that uh, I did kind of find that I just played the Splinter Soul and next to the Endure and just slapped him in the face. So that was really cool. But um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting card. I also consider Faded Memories, but um, I kind of want the initial like value from it immediately. So this becomes like kind of like a three mana uh, Endure in a sense. And obviously it's like, you know, it, it just, it's really annoying for them to deal with. So it's really cool. I'm yet to see its full potential, but I am testing it out. I really like the flavor of it. And just gonna be a bit, be careful how you use it because it is susceptible to like, you know, them pinging off your smaller units if you decide to use on one of them. But I really like it. It's kind of, it's got cool flavor and it's gonna throw people off guard a million times. Three copies of Blade, Blighted Caretaker, no joke, was is gonna be necessary for this kind of list to really shine. Uh, using it on top of your Curse Keeper or on Dying or just even any of your smaller units can really just find you the value, especially on the attack token. You can use it defensively here and there, but it really, it's really wants to be used on the, the attack token because you just can set up insane trades for like Withering Whale and Grasp and that's hence why I run uh, multiples of these cards because that's where Black Caretaker finds a lot of value and obviously alongside uh, Collector and the fact that it provides so many units to buff Endura is really powerful. Uh, three Vile Feast, I think, uh, even though the meta kind of did slow down, I think Vile Feast is actually still just being quite a powerful card for helping to deal with the early game, like against uh, Tempo Sejuani, which seems to be a common example I keep using, but you can help to set up favorable trades and put up chomp blockers and, you know, you're buffing Endura, so it's more of a reason to run a card like Vile Feast. Uh, Glimpse Beyond is going to be definitely a three of. Uh, semi card draw, semi combo potential on some of your Curse Keepers and Undying and just if you stick that one Undying you're always going to have that target for Glimpse Beyond so you're always going to be able to get that card draw. Curse Keeper just provides you with that 4-4 four, four body like one of the most common combos you'll see is like uh, Rabid Butcher into Curse Keeper. You know I only have one copy of Chronicle of Ruin but a lot of the times I've been finding in certain matchups I just want to hit that Butcher on the Curse Keeper and that's going to be enough value for the early game for me. It really helps to blow out against mid range and actually against aggressive decks it can be quite good as well. It really just it's really you, you don't feel good on the uh, opposite end of a Ravenous Butcher on top of Curse Keeper turn 2 on the attack token especially. Now Hapless Aristocrat and Warden's Prey I'm tweaking playing around with these cards in particular i'm not sure if i want three aristocrat or if i want three warden's prey i tried three warden's prey it works i've tried three aristocrat it does work and in like and most of the time it doesn't make much of a difference i think at the moment i just want to actually have two aristocrat and one warden's prey and that is because like they're both fit uh, different kind of niches like you'll find the Warden's spray is a bit more valuable against control decks and you'll find that the aristocrat can help you keep your blockers on the field it's especially relevant when um you're versing like an aggressive deck or a uh, tempo deck to kind of have the spider stick around immediately afterwards without having to spend more mana on the unit that comes out of Warden's Prey. So I like having, ironically enough, the two copies here and the one copy here. And it really comes down to like the early game mulligan. Like if I find the Aristocrat in the opening hand against the aggro, I'll be keeping it. And if I find the Warden's Prey against the um, a control deck, I will definitely keep that. But I'm not going to like mulligan away either or on either matchup like if i find the warden's prey against aggressive i'm always going to keep it but there's a chance that every now and then i'll open up the game with one or either in the opening hand and that's like really cool and it's i guess it's kind of rare and having a nice niche like that where every now and then you're going to verse like ionia and find warden's prey in the opening hand because that will be much more valuable than the aristocrat and following up uh, ravenous butcher definitely play a butcher on top of your early game warden's prey or aristocrat against aggro or sometimes even against mid-range but I guess Tempo Sejuani is the biggest example of right now of a popular uh, S tier deck that you'd probably just still want to hit Butcher on top of Curse Keeper. Let's jump over, let's have some games, hope you guys can enjoy. Leave a like for more Rune Terror content and I'll be sure to see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. So in terms of like other traditional and dual lists, the difference I find with this one is that it's more powerful against Ionia. And if we get those nutty opening hands, we can sometimes develop pretty strong against mid-range decks like this. Keep the Curse Keeper, look for some something like this. Looks pretty interactable. Nothing to do turn one though, which sucks. So I always take I always take a ping here. No problem.
I'm gonna play here. Two threes. I always go for the butcher here, hundred percent. We always swing. Is this guy like the opening hand we'd want to see? If he goes wide here, I will... Fight or die. So he can have, possibly have a one drop. He's always going to get his proc off this turn, so I'm just going to go ahead and develop you. I'm actually fine with this. Seems like he was always going to get his proc off. I don't see any reason not to play the butcher now. He's always getting his proc off. Do I just tank this damage? It might be a little bit too much to tank. So I'm just gonna tank one ironically. Like he's already, cause he's already got his trigger no matter what. I don't see any need to, um, I can, I can use my health as a resource here. And just bring up the deck here. Using the deck to my advantage to see what cards you possibly could have. So he's a deck that runs Fury of the North. If I can get him to use it now, it's a big win for me. I kind of like don't want to swing with my dudes here. They're pretty punishable. Even Elixir of Iron, Make of Rain, these are cards. I think I'm better off just doing this. Now he doesn't want to develop. I wouldn't be shocked to see him drop a Make of Rain here. But it has low odds. It has super low odds. I'm gonna save my Vile Feast till afterwards. But we are gonna swing our dick. So where are they landing? Uh, pretty good for us, I think. If I play, it's already committed targets, right? So I don't think if I play Vile Feast, it makes any difference here. I'm probably going to use a Vile Feast to clear this. He's sitting on a pretty minimal hand. This helps us in case he starts to go wide. I could have waited. Could have waited, maybe. Rasp is good against Misfortune. <laughs> I my spear. Apparently he buffed that up. How do I beat this? There's no way I use my Blighted Caretaker now. pass here. I'm gonna swing swing my asshole in there. I wonder how much he commits to this. It is a pretty heavy commitment, isn't it? It is pretty heavy. Oh, I got nine mana. Force him into protecting his dude. Sink can swing multiple times. If I get him to drop an elixir of iron, is that worth it? When they possibly only run one. Kind of weak. So I'm just going to chomp you. Now 
I'm gonna play Chrono for everyone. Um, he's not sitting on a... He's not sitting on a Sejuani hand, I don't think. I can catch him if I go wide. I can really catch him if I go wide here. He can play Sejuani against me. It's no joke though. Would he not have played Sejuani on that turn just then? So unless he top decked it. Unless he top decked Sejuani. GG, like well played. You're pretty crazy. This card right here has to be Sejuani. Otherwise this is gonna be... Oh! He got me, dude. What does he want from me? He actually got me. Sejuani. That was pretty crazy, I'll be honest. They're not running, um, I've got heaps of outs. I can float this mana, right? So I know he's already used one Fury in North. Unless he draws another Sejuani and has another Fury in North in hand. And you know, it might be unlikely he has an answer here. So how much will I need to deal? This will deal six. Save me some damage. Do I commit this to try and help chip down the Sejuani's HP? I'm not sure what's correct here. Okay, let's say I do this and then I use Grasp of the Undying. I'm dealing six against his Fury of the North, which puts him up to eight. Blight Caretakers are outs. Another grasp is it helping me get to an out. I take less damage. You know, maybe it's just more consistent if I do this. I can always wait to see what kind of mana he spends here. <coughs> it's not bad. Fury of the North, Elixir of Iron. Elixir of Iron was actually the consideration here. Well, he had Fury of the North anyway. I don't mind getting it out of him now. Do I just swing my ass? This blocks into here. Hang on, the ordering might matter here. So I swing with you first. You get blocked. I swing with you. Get blocked. Yeah, I think the, the Undying is going first with the less damage one going in first. I don't think it matters. I'm gonna swing my ass. Best case scenario. I force him into blocking with these units. Best case scenario. So I ironically still have an aristocrat on the field. You need to be sitting on some weird hands like another T-Rex. Another Riptide Rex might get him there. Which would be this card here maybe. No, this is the card that he stole from us. So he stole a card from us, right? He wants to commit more plays unless he has another Rex. If he plays Rex, I can just ruinate. What card would you possibly steal from us? That could make any difference if I don't just play Ruination right now. He hasn't played the card that he stole from us, so I don't... Unless it's Endure. If it's Endure, um, 
That's crazy. That's really, really crazy. Because I haven't drawn one yet. Oh. Okay. Holy shit, he spooked me a little bit there. I wonder if uh player caretaker might be too slow. I think it's important that we find the one drops, isn't it? Look at the burn aggro. This is decent. So would you not play Teemo there turn one if you had it? I wonder. So we never play for value against aggro, just play your dudes. Right into their dudes. Let me show you what I can do. This swing feels fine. Choosing the block there. Fair enough. Which this block makes the most sense. Get that off the field now, because I'm probably going to play Withering Whale well next turn. Or well, maybe not. Let's see what he does here. I can easily pass back to him. Would he just end the turn on me if I did that? I shouldn't be too greedy. Yeah, I can't be too greedy. Especially when cards like Transfusion exist. I wonder if he, if he considers using Transfusion here. I think that's a win for us. I can use Black Caretaker for defense in this matchup. No problem at all. Double sight disciples a little bit scary if he has transfusions in hand. My turn. Slow play. I have my orders. Transfusion. Double grasp should get me back up there. So we could literally be sitting on like a single transfusion. Okay, assuming that he has a transfusion, would he consider saving these units or saving one of these units? Not entirely sure what's correct here. I guess he'd save the Disciple. I guess always coming. It's fine. Yeah, at least it's in top deck mode. Got 
tons of healing cards in hand. Okay, Withering Whale here looks good. Do this before the attack, so I can get more damage in. We are on a bit of a clock here. And this should be pretty hard for him to... I think maybe Decimate would be good for him here. Definitely. Okay. Just use a Vile Feast here and then go for the open attack. GG. Should be nothing he can do. So I think on paper, if they can find the Reckoning, then that makes things a bit tricky. I'll keep cards like these. If they can find like a one drop, just to find something to play. The chump block, the Aristocrat, Warden's Prey I'll settle with. So I'm like on the sidelines of deciding whether or not I want like triple Aristocrat, triple Warden's Prey, or, you know, a mixture of both. At the moment I've got two Aristocrat, one Warden's Prey. This is just um, purely, I might have considered playing Butcher there. This is just purely because they both kind of fit a similar, like they're very similar niches, but Aristocrat at least puts the body immediately back onto the field. So then I don't have to worry about like, uh, in certain matchups the Aristocrat's better, in certain matchups the Warden's Prey would ideally be better. And also with the Wraith Caller and the Chronicle Ruin, that's another thing I'm trying to work out. You know, the gist of. I think if he if he proceeds to do another play, I mean, there's no other play for him to make, really. This block doesn't really feel good. I'm not going to be taking it. I believe I should butcher here. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I don't know if I need to draw cards right now. I've got pretty good cards. My butcher just means I want to look for an open attack. Endures in hand, which is on the field. He's sitting on one mana, which is obviously a frostbite. Hmm. Turn four, he wants to like play Ash. We always have high odds of hitting Wraith Call. Literally, we run Dehu and Dua. That's about it. So you. I'm tempted to Vile Feast here. Maybe I'll Vile Feast you. Does that feel okay? I think it feels okay. I don't think it's a two mana play outside of another Ice, Ice Veil Archer or Sentry. I know he's sitting on like a Frostbite. The Frostbites and then Trades like into here, this trades there. Could end around on him. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna swing here. I believe he has a frostbite card of some kind. I'm not sure if, if I get him to use it now, is that worth it? I think I'm happy with this trade. I think so. I've got two copies of Netherglade Collector at the moment. I was kind of tussling between two and three. Hmm. 
Mm. Getting this down this turn is probably the best time I could do it. Because he gets at least two turns on the field most of the time. Put a couple of chumps here for the big dudes. This feels like the play. Calling strike. At least he's tapped out a mana. Uh, not the best find, if I'm being honest. They run Fury of the North. I need to double check if they actually run Fury of the North here. I guess I'll develop. Not and ready. This is chumps there. Better. I do have Ruinations in the deck. The faster I get the Ruination, the quicker I may win this game. We've got the, uh, we're versing the... Are you? Are you even on the tier list anymore? Oh, you are. I can't see it. I guess I'm gonna go for the glimpse now. You could have another culling strike, that's about it. I think denying me this card draw would be a good play by him. We're good. It feels a little bad. You try and find information on this list. Now. At the ready. Uh, Shadrani, currently tier one. You run Elixir of Iron. Elixir of Iron. Two of. That's about it. So if we go for the Grasp here. Oh my god, I- Oh, <laughs> uh, the pressure got to me. My aim oh, I did. I butchered that play. I actually leveled up here, so I can still go for the grass play. That's actually weird. I've, I've got my action back again. I can't block though, but I can maybe- Go for this to try and clean up my act. Just uh, no looks sort of iron <laughs> and never punished. I wonder if I should play the corset cask here. So they run a uh, brittle steel and harsh winds. Am I supposed to play you to buff my endures slightly? I guess so. Also could have been a good chump blocker. So I play Endure, he plays Sejuani against me. He ideally plays Sejuani. 
I don't think I can afford to actually wait. I can actually possibly go for another Glade into Bladder Caretaker here. Try and slow down the pace of the game a little bit. I guess I should try it. It's either or. Like, I could go start going in for the Endure now, or I could try and buy myself some time. Let's try the Nether Glade play. Try the Nether Glade play here. This gets me a bit of healing, too. Set up for some mean withering whales. That's my play. I've got to set up for the withering whale, I think. And hopefully, this doesn't have another calling strike for the nether glade on field so we can get a little bit of healing. He has it. Still, we're achieving our goal of getting the withering whale off. Oh my. You got two draws there, fair enough. So he always goes for the open here. Ruination's insane. But I don't think I'm in a position where I can afford to use it. He'd be mad not to go for the open attack. So this always... <laughs> Ironically, frostbites the uh, <laughs> our dude, so that's kind of good for us. I'm heavy on the real nations. We've got two copies in the deck. I was testing out three, but I've slowed it down a little bit. Harsh winds. Can't block with any of my dudes. So we're minus twelve. We are live if we do this. And he has no elixir of iron. Just barely. Wow, the ash flipping is actually really dangerous. Okay, so we need atrocity. I think he used the uh, harsh winds there. He still has a crystal arrow in hand, so I have to open attack here. I can't afford to swing with these dudes, ironically, but maybe I can. I don't know, it's weird because he's al she's always going to frostbite my entire board next turn. Still, it's not uncommon for me to find atrocity somewhere hidden in my deck. Will no one listen? So that's a Sejuani. I die if I play Vile Feast. Maybe it's time to drop another Endure. Ironically, I don't think I'll be playing my big cards anytime soon. I won't be playing Real Nation this game. I, I've been struggling to find really... Okay, I should file feast that. Crystal Arrow literally kills my board. Which he has. I think playing the second Endure is a mistake. But at the same time, all he has to do is play Crystal Arrow here and then develop Sejuani and the game's over.
Yeah, it's, would have been loving to find useful cards. Real less health. I can't survive this turn. Is this a Giovanni in hand? I know there is. That does it as well. Damn. He seemed to just have every answer he needed to. There wasn't, there was there not actually a Sejuani in his hand. That's crazy. Or he just had the lethal anyway, so I don't think it entirely mattered. 